Good morning. Welcome to another art lesson. Last time we looked at perspective and uh, we defined perspective as a system that artists use to create an illusion of distance or depth. And uh, we looked at the four major types of perspective. We said there is what is known as linear perspective, there is what is also known as area perspective, there is overlapping perspective, and foreshortening. And our focus in last time's lesson was a linear perspective, and we looked at one-point perspective. So we say we define linear perspective as a perspective that uses lines um, in order for one to create an illusion of distance. And in one-point perspective, we said in this perspective, there's only one vanishing point. In, and um, we also looked at some of the terms that we get to find in perspective. There is what is known as the horizon. There is what is known as uh, the vanishing point. There is also picture plane. And there is also what is known as depth. We did define these terms, and I hope you've been looking at those terms closely. Uh, in today's lesson, we are looking at two-point perspective. Now, two-point perspective is a type of linear perspective. And um, in two-point perspective, we have two vanishing points. And two-point perspective is ideal when you are constructing or making a drawing of a building or a box-like feature that is being viewed at an angle. Okay, so this is how two-point perspective works. So I have my picture plane here. So this is where my work will be composed. Now, in perspective drawing, um, we say the first feature that you put in place is the horizon. And we define the horizon as an imaginary line that is drawn across the picture plane. And it separates the sky from the land or the ground. So the horizon will be constructed here. So starting from that point, stretching to the other end. So my horizon has been drawn. Now, when you're drawing lines that will guide you through the process of perspective, you are not supposed to make them very dark. These lines are simply there to guide you through the process. So my, my horizon has been drawn. The first feature that has to be placed in your composition. The next thing that I'll put in place um, is what is known as the vanishing points. Okay, so two-point perspective uses two vanishing points. So meaning that I'll put them on the two ends of the, the, the horizon. So one vanishing point will come there. So I'll call this VP. And another vanishing point will be fixed on this other end, another VP. So I'm abbreviating the, the term vanishing point. So two things have been fixed. The vanishing points on the two ends of the horizon. The, the third feature that I'll put in place is a vertical line that will be drawn at the center of this horizon. So I'll put, I'll place the, I'll place my vertical line in the center. Something like this. So my vertical line crosses the horizon. And what I've done is that because I'm drawing a building that is being viewed at a normal angle or a normal eye level, so I'll make my bottom line as it crosses the horizon quite short. You can see the distance. Um, the top line is extended. It's quite high. So my vertical line is in place as well. The two vanishing points are in place. So I'll now begin working on the on the edges of the building. Now, for me to do this, I'll draw lines. I'll decide on the height of the building, okay? Uh, how far should the building go? If I want it to go that high, it means I'll draw a line coming from this vanishing point, connecting to that point. So this will be the height of this building. The same thing on this side, I'll draw a line going to that same point. So let's begin. Uh, we've decided, so my height will be somewhere there. So I want my building to be that high. So what I'll do, I'll draw a line from this vanishing point 
to that point there. So my my line has been drawn on this side. I'll do the same thing to this other side where you have the vanishing point. I'll draw another line touching the same point which the first line had touched. So the line will go there. So you carefully fix your line there, touching that other point. So I've done the top edges of the building. So there's need for me to, to, to draw the bottom ends or the edge of the building. So I'll draw similar lines from that vanishing point to this point where the building ends. So this is this this will be the this will be the bottom or, or the ground, so to say. This is where the building starts from, and this is where the building ends going up. Okay. So the same thing will be done on this other end. So from the vanishing point to that point. So this somehow guides me through the building the box-like structure that I want to work on. Then I'll decide on how long this building will be on the sides. So if I want it to end here, what I'll do, I'll draw a vertical line. The vertical line will only go up to that point. If I want this side to be short, I'll make it, I'll, I'll say, okay, my building will end somewhere here. So I'll draw another vertical line. So as you can see, there is a box-like structure here that is being viewed at an angle, okay? And um, this is what creates the illusion of distance. The thing with perspective is that the principle of perspective is that um, the size of objects tend to reduce in size as the distance increases. So you can see this is a box or a building, you see that the distance is increasing and its size is also reducing and this is what creates that illusion of of um, illusion of uh, space so uh, I'll darken this so that you can clearly see the the box like structure that I'm talking about that is that is in three dimension I'm just working on the last two lines just to darken them so that you can clearly see the box like structure. So this is the corner now that I was talking about, the one we started with at the beginning. So this is it. Now if I want to bring in features, let's say I want this to be a building, okay, uh, what it would mean that is that every other feature that I'm going to include has to be guided by perspective lines that are coming from the vanishing points okay so let's take for example i want to include windows here what i'll do i want to fix windows here i'll draw this line touching this corner line here this corner vertical line this line will start from the vanishing point very faint line so this may be the top of one part of the window. I'll draw another one to define the bottom of the window, starting from the vanishing point, going inside like that, okay? So I can draw several of them. Now to add more detail, or to define the windows properly, this is what I'll do. I'll fix that there, and another one there. Then. For you to clearly see it, I'll darken this end. Let me just darken the, the window space. Okay, so I've put one feature there. Remember this was the horizon. I may not need this line because there's a building on top. The horizon appears in the background of the building. So I'll erase this. This line was just there to get me started. 
okay? So some lines that I do not need, I'll erase them. And it is for this reason that you're encouraged to draw very faint lines when you're working on perspective. So one part of the window is done. If I want to uh, work on another window that is on the floor below this floor, I'll still start from the vanishing point. I'll draw a straight line and it will simply end where this vertical line is. Another one below, defining the bottom part of the window from the vanishing point going to that vertical line. Okay, if I cut this, I'll end the window here with a vertical line, another vertical line there. Then I can darken this so that you can clearly see it. The faint lines that I do not need, which are no longer part of the composition, I'll remove them. But remember, these lines were guiding you. So I have structures like this. So I've done one plane or one side of this building with the windows. If I want to put up the entrance to this building, um, I can still draw a line from the vanishing point going through that building to this vertical line and then you have the bottom fixed there. So let me draw, draw the entrance. So I'll put a vertical line there. And let's say the building ends there. The door ends there. So this will be the doorway. Let me just darken it again so that you can clearly see it. So I have the doorway there. So every other feature that you want to include in your composition, make sure it comes from the vanishing point here. So let's say there are several other windows here, uh, which are of the same height as the door. I'll start from there. Maybe I shouldn't have erased that, that line. So let's go. We have that line. Then we'll have several other windows fixed down below here. So let me just get rid of that small mistake. Okay. So I have that another vertical line creating space another vertical line another vertical line so you notice that these are reducing in size because of the increased distance that is there so these these can be windows So let's say I'm done. There's so much that you can do. There's so many details that you, that can be added. Uh, if I wanted, there could be one more window there. I already have the perspective lines there. So that window is already guided by those perspective lines. So I have a window there. Okay, so the part of the building is done. Let's say there are windows or one or two windows on this side of the wall. I'll still start from the perspective, uh, from the vanishing point and I can take it to that point, the corner again. So I'll draw a faint line going to that point. Another faint line going to that point. So this bottom line defines the bottom edge of the window. So um, then this will be defined with vertical lines. Okay, so I won't go all the way up to the end of this building. I hope you've gotten the idea that there's so much you can do. But just remember that whenever you're adding features, these features should have guiding lines that are coming from the vanishing point. So there's a window there, okay? If uh, there's a smaller window on top, I'll still put... Um, I'll still start my line from the vanishing point and it will touch this vertical line that defines the corner. Okay, so that's the top. Then I have the bottom. I can have so many details. Okay, so this is how you would actually view a building that is in perspective 
and in normal view or normal eye level so this is more or less like a building if you weren't you can even put a rod in one point perspective the perspective that you learned last time so you could still put a rod here in one point perspective or you could still bring in other buildings but even the construction of these other buildings it would mean that your lines will be guided by the two perspective lines yeah so like i said there's so much that you can do i also tried out this this is a small um this is a small composition of buildings in town okay so you have this building here you have another building there there are several other buildings that you can bring in and you you see that they are all reducing in size so when this is applied when and when this is practiced you are able to create an illusion of space and distance in your work this makes your work look more realistic so what i would want you to do is go through the process step by step what i was doing and try out making a composition of a box or a building that is drawn in one point perspective and is being viewed at a particular angle thank you so much until next time